Hi everyone. So in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to build this circuit using uh, Tinkercad simulation simulator. Uh, so basically, you can pretty much build any circuit on Tinkercad and then simulate it and make sure it's working. And then once you know it's working, then you can build it on your breadboard. So here we have a Boolean expression. X is equal to A or with B and it with all this. Uh, B naught or with C. And then the schematic is shown here. And then the truth table is here shown. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to build the circuit here on Tinkercad. And then we're going to verify to make sure that our truth table uh, is exactly what is uh, we've written here, what we mentioned here. Okay. Uh, one thing that I haven't shown in the schematic is the common cathode LED. Uh, so the LED, there would be an LED and a resistor. And that the other side of the resistor would be connected to the, um, to the uh, common rail. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to open up a Tinkercad account if you haven't, and then come over here on this side here where it says uh, circuits, click on that. And then once you click on that, then you can go ahead and say, create a new circuit. Okay. And then uh, once you've done that, then what you're going to do is uh, you're going to see a page like this. And then on the very right hand side, you'll see the uh, library where it shows all the components. And if you click on this, you can see all the components and then and then you can actually search for your components. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to search for a, for a breadboard and then click on this breadboard. And then hopefully drag it down. If you click on it, it should automatically um, allow you to bring it to the left hand side of the screen. Uh, my computer is a little bit slower, so hopefully your computer is much faster. And then we're going to go ahead and find our power supply. Oh, so we're going to go ahead and find our power supply. Okay, power supply. There you go. We're going to go ahead and drag that. So if you grab it and you drag it, you can actually put it here. And we're going to quickly go ahead and connect the uh, wires to the for this uh, power supply. So that's my positive. I'm going to make sure it's red. So this way I know exactly what I'm connecting. This is my negative. Um, this is the negative rail. So I'm going to make that one black. And I want to make sure that both rails are connected. So I do this. So make sure that I utilize both rails if I need to. So this way I don't have to use uh, long wires. And I can use shorter wires. Okay, so that's red. So my power supply is connected to my breadboard and both rails are connected. You'll see over here it says start simulation. So if I go ahead and say start simulation, you'll see it says 5 volts. Um, so that means that my power supply works, but I don't know if my rails are connected correctly. So what I can do is I can look up for a multimeter. So I can click here and then erase this and say multi. And then drag the multimeter over here and then connect the negative to the negative rail and the positive to the positive rail and then I'm going to change the color for these just to be consistent with the coloring that we've been with that we've been using and then I'm going to go ahead and run and you can see that the rail is 5 volts so these wires are connected correctly so we're going to assume that this rail is connected also okay uh, you can see in the schematic that we have a couple of gates here we have an or gate we have two or gates um, we have an AND gate and as well as a NOT gate and here are our inputs A, B, and C. So uh, obviously the, the, the switches that you're going to be using, you're using an SBDT, but um, I'm going to be showing you using this type of switch, a slide switch. So basically um, it does the same purpose. It has the same purpose, you know, as other switches. So it's easy to connect and it's easy for me to show you in this, uh, using this, um, using this switch. Okay, so I'm going to drag this as well. Okay. Okay. If I zoom in, you'll see that these this switch has uh, has got three pins. So it's got a terminal 1, common, terminal 2. So the middle pin is connected to ground, so I'm going to go ahead and connect that to ground. Connect this one to ground. Connect this one to ground. Okay, once I've done that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the resistors for the switch. 
So go over here again, type in resistors or resistor, and then just drag that over here. So we need A, and then we also need B, and as well as C. So this is the non-inverting side. So this terminal here is a non-inverting, and this is the inverting terminal. Um, so just wanted to make sure that you know that. And then if you had, for example, this would be A, this would be uh, A bar, this side here, um, just to make things easy for you to understand. So I have my A, B, and C. It's just for the purpose of the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these so you know exactly which one is which. Okay, let me place that there. This one here is B. Make sure that they're all okay. And then the very last one here is going to be um, C. Okay, so that's C. So, okay, let's just move that. I want to make sure they're all good. Okay, excellent. So A, B, and C. So we've set up our switches. That's good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look for um, the uh, IC gates. So if you type in 74HC, let's say for the first one, 04, which is our hex inverter. So we can just place it right over here. Okay. Uh, the next gate is the 74HC. Okay, we're going to use, the, we're looking for the OR gate this time. So this is going to be 748C32. There you go. I'm going to drag it right over here. And then the very last gate is going to be the 748C08, which is the AND gate. Okay, I'll grab that and I'll place it right over here. Okay, once I've done this, then... Um, Maybe I should add the LED as well and the resistor. So connect, so find my LED, so type in for LED. And then let's just place it right like this. And the resistor, and then we'll go ahead and grab the resistor. And then we'll just connect the resistor to the common cathode. And then let's see if I can rotate this. There you go. So I'll rate it, rotate that. So that means that, just to make sure that everything is clear. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Just to make sure that everything is clear for you. So I'll bring it over here. Actually, I'll leave it here just to make sure that uh, this is connected. I can show you the wiring on how it's connected. So this resistor here is connected to the negative terminal. So then this end here would be connected to common um, cathode. Okay. And then, uh, okay. And then we'll leave that like this until we figure out the, um, the rest of the circuit. So we have our uh, IC set up here, uh, but the power and the ground for the IC is not connected. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and connect those. So I'm going to connect the power. So that's one. This is the other one, and this is the other one. So I'm going to change the color just to be consistent with the coloring. Red, and this one also red. Okay, and then I'm going to connect the ground. We're going to leave the ground as green. Okay, that didn't work. So ground is pin number seven. Again, that didn't work. You got to snap snip on the on um, snap on the thing the pin here then here you go okay excellent okay looks like our ground is connected to our negative rail so that's pin number seven for all our ICs so those are connected uh, I'm not gonna uh, connect the unused inputs to the um, VCC or ground uh, for the simulation but when you're doing on your actual breadboard you should be connecting all your unused inputs to ground or a VCC, either ground or VCC. Okay, so now that I have set this up, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect. So I'm going to start from this end and I'm going to make my way uh, this way towards the right. So I'm going to go ahead and connect A, switch A to the input of the first OR gate. 
Uh, so this is my non-inverting switch. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that to um, to 74AC32, which is the OR key. And I'm going to make this color yellow. Okay. So the next one I'm going to connect is B. And B is going to be connected to the input of the OR gate. Okay, which is the second input, input 1B. I'm going to make this also yellow. And B is also be connected to the input of the NOT gate. So which is, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a wire and then connect that to the input of the 74HG04, which is this one here. And I'm going to make this color, make it this color here. Okay, so so far we've connected A and B to the OR gate as well as the NOT gate. Uh, C needs to be connected to the input of, um, oh, before we do that, we're going to connect the output of the NOT gate, which is B bar, which is going to be pin number um, output 1, pin number 2 of the 740C04. So we're going to go ahead and click on this and then connect it to the, not to this one because this is the output, we're going to be connecting it to this one here because this would be the second OR gate, so input 2A. This one here is output of the first OR gate. This is going to be the second OR gate, which is going to be the first input. Okay, so this is connected, and now I'm going to connect C, which is going to be, um, so obviously these things are over, so if I click on it, and drag it and then I can connect it to the input 2B. I'm going to do it this way so you can see all the other wires as well. Okay, I'm going to change this color to uh, purple and then this one here also to purple. Okay, so uh, these are connected. So the, all this is connected. A is connected, B is connected, as well as C and B bar. So next thing is we're going to connect the output of the OR gate to the input of the AND gate. So we have two output, output 1 and output um, 2. So we're going to grab output 1 and going to connect it to the input of the first AND gate. And we're going to say it's, uh, we're going to use a brown color. And then we're going to do the same thing for the second OR gate, which is this one here. And it's going to be connected to, so I'm going to go ahead and find that. That's output 2. I'm going to grab that and then connect it to the second input of the AND gate. So um, if it's confusing, pause the video or rewind, uh, uh, you know, go back and rewatch the video so you know exactly where these are connected. So this is output 2 is connected to the input of the first AND gate. Once I've done that, the very last one is to connect my output of my AND gate to my LED. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to connect it to the common cathode of my LED. And I'm going to make this a gray color. Okay. So once I've done this, now I know that my circuit is set up. Everything is set up correctly. So I want to go ahead and test uh, to make sure that the uh, it is our truth table shows what it's supposed to be showing or our circuit that we've built on this simulator here works. So right now you can see it's 0, 0, 0. The LED is off. That is correct. When it's 0, 0, 1, so this one here, I'm doing row number 2, 0, 0, 1. So C is 1. I'm going to go ahead and make C 1. You'll notice the LED is off. I'm going to put it back into the default state. And the next row here we're looking at, it's 0, 1, 0. So 0, 1, 0, the LED is off. We're still good. And then here, the LED should turn on. So when it goes to 0, 1, 1, so when A is 0 and then B is 1 and then C is 1, the LED should turn on. And you can see the LED turns on. So that shows that our, uh, so, so far, our circuit is set up correctly. So I'm going to put it back into the default state and then go back over here and set up and you and do this row here. It's 1, 1, 0, 0. So 1, um, 1, 0, 0. And you can see the LED is on. Back to the default state. 
um, one zero one. So one zero one. The LED is on. That's good. And then here it's one one zero. So one one zero. The LED should be off. The LED is off. So let me go back to the default state. And then the very last one, it's when all of them are 1, 1, and the LED should be on. So if this is correct, then uh, we know that our LED works. Okay, 1, 1, 1, and you can see that the LED is, um, oh, let me just go ahead and click on that. You can see that when it's 1, 1, 1, the LED is on. So it looks like that we've set up our circuit correctly on our breadboard. And now it's time to build this on our breadboard uh, physically. Uh, take the parts that we have and put it on our breadboard and then set it up. And you can pretty much exactly set this up exactly the same way. Although your switches are going to be different. And the unused inputs are going to be pretty much connected to VCC or ground. So this is it. Uh, this was a circuit and uh, I used Tinkercad to demonstrate on how you can build these circuits on your on uh, Tinkercad here. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.